Straight to the top story this evening, the second quarter GDP numbers were released earlier today. The Indian economy grew by 5.4%, the slowest pace in seven quarters. Lata Venkatesh is here to break down the numbers for you. Lata, over to you. This is a seriously disappointing number at 5.4%. Of the poll I did, even the lowest number was only 63 And of course, the average I got was 6.5%. The Reserve Bank was standing at 7% as recently as October 1st week and later brought it down to 6.8% expectation. So 5.4% was in nobody's gaze. The culprit uh, appears to be manufacturing and mining. We did get that whiff when the second quarter corporate results came in, all the metal, mining, oil and gas companies, everybody dependent on this commodity segment reported negative EBITDA. So we should have realized that these two would have disappointed. So that number, manufacturing, the average I got in the poll was 4.7. It is coming at 2.2%. Mining is minus 0.1%. So those are the ones that have dragged the output down. The other disappointment is financial sector. You know, that category includes finance, insurance and real estate. Real estate had not done so badly, but uh, nevertheless, we have just got 6.7% uh, growth. The expectation was that finance would be somewhere at 8%. That also has been a disappointment. But if you looked at GDP, not from the output side, but from the expenditure side, did you spend it on consumption, on investment, uh, on um, uh, imports and exports? Then... The, the disappointment is on both investment and consumption. Consumption has grown at only 5.9 or maybe 6%. The expectation was that that would be a, a little better. But investment is the bigger disappointment. It's grown by only 5.4%. For the last many quarters, uh, because of excellent government capex, the growth has been, you know, between 7 and 11%. We even did, uh, you know, 11.6% year ago. So that is another big disappointment that CapEx has not picked up neither from the states nor from the center and private CapEx has not quite picked up the baton. So this is an all-round disappointment. What it could mean is that uh, the government, will, the economy will not be able to churn out uh, anywhere near the 7.4 that the Reserve Bank was expecting in the second half. Even 7% looks very difficult. And if it does less than 7%, then the full year will be even less than 6.5%. To get the full year at six and a half, you need at least 7% from the second half, which looks a tad too difficult. The question now, or rather the onus now falls on the Reserve Bank. Will they be able to deliver something in the monetary policy of December 6th? Uh, a rate cut will be tough because the last inflation number is over above their inflation mandate of 2 to 6%. It came in at 62 But perhaps a CRR cut is possible so that more liquidity is released into the system. We'll have to wait and see. But at the moment, I have to sign off by saying that this is a seriously disappointing number. So disappointing number there. Thank you so much for that, Lata. But let's go across to the Chief Economic Advisor, Ananta Nageshwaran, who is addressing the media on these Q2 GDP data. Uh, let's cut across live. That is uh, a steady trend improvement that is going on, as we also mentioned in the case of construction. Services sector growth has been steady. And therefore, in general, GBA at basic prices, the five-year CAGR has been rising over the last three financial years in Q2. On the demand side, if you look at it, total consumption growth is uh, the five-year CAGR, uh, annual compounded annual growth rate was 3.6 last year, holding steady at 3.5 this year. Private final consumption expenditure remaining steady at 4.4. The gross fixed capital formation, obviously, even though the second quarter, and we will talk about it later, was uh, disappointing, especially the first half of the current financial year, having witnessed a slowdown in the uh, capital expenditure of the public sector in the country as a whole. But by and large, I think the uh, recovery in the gross fixed capital formation uh, after the second decade slowdown is continuing. Uh, exports of goods and services is, uh, again, uh, is, is on the improving track. Uh, import of goods and services is actually slightly lower or steady. And therefore, the five-year GDP growth rate uh, is in real GDP uh, or GDP at constant prices is improving at 4.4% compared to 4.2% uh, in the second quarter of last year. 
Uh, in order to give you some context, because bulk of the slowdown in the second quarter uh, from the supply side, because it is attributable to the manufacturing slowdown and also the slowdown in mining uh, uh, and quarrying sectors, because if you look at the production of the three items, in, by the way, I wanted to point out to you that for the first time on this call, we have the uh, uh, assistant additional director general Sanjay from the Ministry of Statistics. He's virtually present on this call. And alongside sitting alongside me physically in my room, we have the deputy director general, uh, Mr. Dilip Kumar Simha uh, of the National Income Accounting Division, NAD of MOSPI, is also physically present here. Uh, and, and I think going forward, we will have officials from the Ministry of Statistics with us in this press conferences so that uh, questions related to statistical estimations, they will be uh, able to shed more light and offer better perspectives than I will be able to do since I will be coming from the macroeconomic angle. So I just wanted to inform you about the presence of these two officials on the call and, I, and my, my, my sincere thanks to them for being here. Um, I think uh, advanced economies, I talked about the fact that manufacturing and mining have been principal causes of the slowdown, and especially coal, natural gas, and uh, crude oil constitute nearly 50% of the uh, mining sector, and they have been uh, 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 tepid in the, in the second quarter. And that is the reason. But if you look at the global scenario, you can see in the second quarter, manufacturing purchasing managers indices came down below 50 in the European Union, and also globally in general, it was below uh, uh, 50, whereas in the case of India, it has remained uh, uh, above 50. Emerging, as you can see on the right side of your chart. So th there, is, there is an impact coming from the global supply chain uncertainties, partly because of the unexpected uh, growth under recovery in the United States, in, in, in China, which also led to uh, concerns about uh, higher imports from that source, from that country, which would have also had an impact uh, in uh, on domestic prices and therefore domestic manufacturing. And some of you may recall uh, the, the press conference and statements made by Mr. Narendran of Tata Steel in this regard not so long ago. Uh, and also geopolitical risk and uncertainty flared up in the second quarter leading up to the presidential elections in the United States. More importantly, there has been a very big spike in trade uncertainties uh, as the election season progressed in the United States. So, and the global supply chain pressure index also went back up below zero. So we want to put the second quarter slowdown, which is while most of us anticipated it uh, in the light of the excess rainfall and therefore lower footfalls in purchase of consumer durables and also some religious observance days falling fully in the month of September, we wanted to give you some more perspective on the higher than expected decline in the growth rate, which is the second derivative, and global factors play a role, and some, are, and some very specific sectors in India within manufacturing and mining are also playing a role. So one should be uh, able to interpret the slowdown, therefore, in the, in the right perspective. Um, and that is why these global developments naturally showed up in the uh, uh, suppliers' delivery times index uh, becoming uh, uh, s slower uh, and also growth in new export orders moderated much more sharply uh, in, in the case of India's manufacturing goods. So there is a shadow or a spillover from global factors on domestic manufacturing, which is what we see in the data as well. But however, what we need to focus on, remembering the fact that we are already two months into the third quarter and the current financial year is barely three and a half, three, three months and a week away uh, uh, from concluding. But I think by and large, we should expect to see the growth in second half of the current financial year when it is reported. We will get the first estimates in January the uh, advance estimate and then the first preliminary estimate in February and of course the, the, uh, the, the other estimate in May as well for the full financial year FY25. So uh, what we are seeing in this slide is the fact that Kharif production has been very high, both in the food grains, in rice, 
Uh, and also there is higher MSPs, which should incentivize uh, rubby sowing. Uh, storage reservoir, so water storage in reservoirs is very adequate for the rubby crop and fertilizer availability is at comfortable level. So the kind of pickup in agricultural sectoral growth that we have seen in the last two quarters, we expect it to continue in the uh, second half of the year as well. Industrial activity, as we said, continues to pick up in the expansion zone. And I think uh, fuel consumption, as you can see in the bottom table, compared to July, September, October was higher, and so was power consumption. And the uptick in uh, uh, e-way bill generation uh, from 10.9 to 11.7 from August to October uh, is also encouraging. 